Well, hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts. And today I'm going to do a tutorial for my cluster stitch gingham blanket. A um, few things I wanna point out before we get started is how this stitch, I'm using a double crochet two together cluster stitch in this row, and then it's followed by a single crochet row, but it has a two-sided appearance. So this is what the inside of the blanket looks like. You can see that it looks just a little bit bumpier. And then here's the other side. So I like to call this the right side, and this would be considered the back side, the wrong side, whatever. This is ribbing that I like to do. And I finally, I've got a new way to teach you guys to do the corner with double crochet, chain double crochet that I think is a little bit easier. And the yarn that I'm using is this wonderful new product called Burnett Bundle Up. Yarn Inspirations has sent this to us to try and we have absolutely fallen in love with it. It is a polyester type of yarn, but it is so soft, it feels like a nice soft flannel blanket. It's weighted medium four I did use an I 5.5 millimeter hook, even though I was carrying the yarn. And that's what I mainly wanted to try one of my gingham blankets with this to see if it was heavier or anything. And it's really not. It is just so nice. So um, anyway, another couple things I want to point out are I am carrying the yarn up the side. So you'll see just little bits of the color poking through. Um, and if you can tell you can still see a little bit of the dark blue coming through the light blue and up here just barely the light blue through the the gray color so just want to make sure that yes when i'm carrying yarn you still can see little bits of color all right well let's get started all right so the squares on this blanket are 10 stitches wide and eight rows high of alternating cluster, single crochet, cluster, etc. But for today's sample, I'm gonna just make these a little bit um, smaller so that we can get through the tutorial quicker. So let's just make each um, block, we're just going to do three clusters wide. So what you'll need to do is a multiple of three. So let's just do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then plus two for the turning chain. Okay, so the pattern repeat on the blanket is any odd number times 10 plus two. All right, so we begin in the third chain from the hook with a double crochet. Now it combines with this turning chain and to me that's the first cluster of the row right there so now let's work a second cluster by yarning over inserting your hook yarning over and pulling up a loop then yarning over and pulling through two now stop right there we're going to yarn over again insert our hook yarn over Pull up a loop, yarn over, and just pull through two. Now yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook, and that is your first cluster. Now let's work one more. And after we pull through the first two loops, let's stop right there because that is our third cluster and we need to change color. Now we need to add in the light blue color. This light blue color will be used throughout the entire blanket in every row, which you usually choose the medium color to do that. So I'm also going to keep the dark blue to the back of my work and the light blue to the front of my work. This will help you from keeping the yarn to get twisted. 
So let's work another cluster. We insert our hook underneath that chain loop and underneath the dark blue because we're carrying that yarn along. with a cluster. There we go. We can kind of adjust our loops there. The first row is usually the hardest because we're just trying to get our tension correct and get all of these stitches in here. Let's work one more. All right, now before we pull through, we're going to always keep the light color or this light blue towards the front of our work. Now we'll still need to carry the yarn with us. So I am inserting my hook back into the same spot in order to make this cluster. working underneath and carrying that smaller or the lighter color along with me. Here's the last stitch of this row. Pull through. Okay, that's what I've got so far. Now it's a row of single crochet. So chain one and turn and go ahead and bring this light blue around the side and put it behind your work so that we can insert our hook underneath that carried yarn and make a single crochet. On this one, it's time to change. So again, we're keeping the dark color to the back. Sometimes when I'm sitting on the couch, I'll have the one color on the right side of me and one color on the left side of me. Keep them far apart. And then that helps um, them from getting twisted at the end of the row. So see, and before I pull through, pull the one forward. And I am working into the top of that last stitch, the kind of the double crochet that was combined with the turning chain. Now let's go back and work another row of cluster. So I'm chaining two and turning. Wrap the light blue around the side. And right here into this first stitch, you can count the two chains, one, two, right there that's where we'll work our first double crochet that acts as our first cluster so there's one now let's finish two and here's three Give me some slack on that, keep it to the front.
Okay, one more row of single crochet, and then we'll be changing and adding in the silver color. Okay, here we are. We've got our little square. Now, of course, on the larger blanket, this would have been, like I said, um, eight rows high, um, 10 stitches across. But we'll stop right here when we have our four rows. One, two, three, four. Now we will pull through with the light blue because the light blue always either alternates with the dark blue or stacks on top of it. So we will chain two. And I always take the time now, this is one end on that blanket, I went ahead and I clipped the dark blue and I wove that end in later. So you can at least clip that one. Now again, the same pattern is still the same. I work one double crochet that acts as the first cluster. And to add in the silver color, or another great substitution if you didn't want to use the gray, is you could use the cream. Um, there we go, here's my end. You just simply lay it over the hook, pull it through. Adjust your tension. And here we go again. Everything is still the same. I am working over this light blue tail, bringing it along with me. I'll keep the silver to the back or that gray color, pull through. Chain one and turn, and now let's work a single crochet row. Wrap the silver color around the end. All right, I'll do this for a total of four rows, and then we'll get to, I'll teach you that border. I'm going to add um, one more section of the dark blue. So you can cut off your silver when you're done with that. And we add back in the dark blue. And I was thinking as I was working out, this is a great, um, I mean, if you're first time making gingham or unsure about this stitch, just do this little sample swatch so that you can get really comfortable before jumping in to the big blanket. Now I'm wrapping the light blue. I've never cut the light blue and you really won't need to because it's used in every row. But we're starting our change of color with the row of clusters. So that is still the same, still changing colors in the exact same way, pulling through. Okay, so I'm gonna finish another the four rows and then we'll start that border. Okay, I'm done with my sample swatch. So the very last thing I wanna do is go ahead and pull through with the blue, the dark blue. Let's cut everything off and uh, take the time to weave in your ends so that we can put a border on this. All right, to show you how I weave in ends with this um, burnout bundle up is honestly, 
you can just poke your needle anywhere that you'd like in and out it does a really good job of kind of staying put grabbing on itself they don't really slide around it's not like velvet so I just typically go in and out and underneath the stitches of the same color several times try not to make it too bulky in one spot kind of zigzag my way down and um, wherever I see you down here and then tie it off maybe I'll come back through this way end up over here on the end so then I will just snip it off essentially they disappear so okay so now we have a little swatch um, kind of similar to the blanket let me show you the blanket again so that these are the color choices that I kind of made I loved to do the darker color as the base row because I wanted to do the dark border so my first thing I'm going to do is do work one complete round of single crochet and then I work a complete round of double crochet and then we'll begin the ribbing all right so I'm beginning in the last corner kind of where we stopped I'll pull up a loop and chain one and then I'll work one single crochet right there where I pulled up the loop and now I'm just going to also crochet over this end so I can kind of save myself a little bit of time of weaving it in later So when I get to this very last stitch, I'm going to work three to get us around the corner. One, two, three. Now, I am going to work one single crochet at the end of each single crochet row. And then around the post of those cluster rows, I'll work two single crochets. So I go one into that end right there, the end of the single crochet row. And then I'll come over here. I kind of like to split that cluster apart a little bit, just so I can hide the yarn that I carried up the side a little bit better. So I see I'm splitting apart. Okay, when I get down to this end here, at the bottom of the stitch, that's where I'm going to start. I'll get my corner going. One, two, three. And this third one kind of is counting as the first one of that bottom of the row. So just work one at the bottom of each of those clusters there. Just insert your hook. I'm going underneath the two loops. I'm going to finish in that third stitch. I'll just make my corner, add two more, and then the same thing up the side. I'll work two single crochets per the post, and then one for the single crochet row. And that should pretty much even out the sides of your blanket. Now I'm back up here where we started and we pulled up a loop and single crocheted in that space. That's the space I'm in. 
So I've worked one single crochet and I'm going to work a second one. So there's our three. One, two, three. Now I'm going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that very first single crochet that we made. And now I'll chain two and I don't need to turn. I'm just going to keep going in the same direction. And in the next stitch, I will work a double crochet. And now I'll work one double crochet into the top of each single crochet. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do just slightly different in the corner. And by the corner, I mean the middle single crochet stitch. You know how we put three? We're gonna work into the second of those with a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that helps us get around the corner. Now continue making your double crochets into each stitch. So do that on each corner. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the middle single crochet of the corner. Now when you get back to that um, final corner, the corner kind of um, is that second to last stitch. So then you'll still be able to work one double crochet before you join and I'm going to join into the top of that stitch right there with a slip stitch. And here's what I've got so far. So here we go. Looks pretty even. Hopefully, you know, when you get to your big blanket, this will, even if it's rippling a little bit, the or this feels like this was too many stitches on the side, don't worry because the blanket kind of naturally gets pulled in on the side as we start working the ribbing. So chain two, you do not need to turn. Now we just work about four rows of this ribbing. So on the next double crochet, we're just working around the posts and working double crochet. So you do one to the front Yarn over and pop one to the back. Ah. Okay, so I kind of, after I pull through, I kind of like get that up a little bit so it'll be taller. And I pop one to the back. All right, work these down to the corner and I'll show you what's different about working the corners than my other patterns. Okay, so I'm right here to where there are the double crochet, chain space, double crochet, all into the corner stitch. So how I'll work this is the next post in the sequence is supposed to be a front post, so I will pop it forward. And then around the chain space, I will work the double crochet, chain, double crochet. I used to have you just work three double crochets into the corner and then we would work a series of front and back post double crochets around that middle double crochet and it was just a little bit bulky and hard to do. And subbing it out for just a chain one seemed to be a really good solution. So now I just start again with popping the chain, the popping it forward to match the other side and now I'll alternate. All right, here I am uh, ending this last row. That'll pop forward. So I just had worked that corner space and then here I am at the starting. So I just insert my hook into the top of that stitch and then slip stitch, chain two and continue around. Now I'll match 
what I have from the row below. So if it's a front post, I'll still pop it forward. And if it's a back post, I'll pop it to the back. And let me work you on down to this first corner and then I think you've got it. Oh, I worked this, you know, you can work this border as wide as you liked, as you like. And I believe I did four rounds of the ribbing. So what you do is, this is a forward one. Here is my double crochet chain double crochet so I will work this one to the back because this one landed as a forward I'm just always alternating don't forget your double crochet chain double crochet build out that corner and then start with a back and there you go okay that's it you never have to turn your rounds or anything so and this yarn is really it is pretty stretchy flexible like how you see me do just get the stitches all in order let me show you the blanket one more time um gosh i really really enjoyed making this and it's washing up perfectly beautifully i think the baby that this one is going to go for is i think I am wishing I would have made this for Jack. So there probably will be more in my future made with Burnout Bundle Up. It is absolutely one of my favorite new yarns. So I hope that they keep making it in all sorts of colors. Here's a kind of a look at what the corners will end up looking like if you're interested. Okay, you guys, come and show me your versions with all the beautiful colors that you choose to do. Of course, you don't have to use Bundle Up. This will work with any yarn. Oh, look, this is where I, looks like I mistakenly didn't yarn over that one. But anyway, that's okay. Just want to make sure that you can see that the yarn is being carried there and it kind of disappears and blends into the blanket once you're finished. So anyway, sorry, I got distracted. Come and show us. Come join our group on Facebook, Daisy Farm Crafters and post a picture of what you're making. Um, join our community of other people that are making gingham blankets and all the other Daisy Farm patterns. And then that way, if you have a question, you can ask somebody from the community. It is a lot of fun. All right, you guys, you have a good day.